I'm just laying out a board right now and I figured it might be interesting to talk about board layout things just kind of as I do them because there are many ways you could approach board layout but there's sort of a, a typical flow that people do to make it just kind of easier to get a nice clean layout uh, from the start. So what I've got going on here is I've got a microcontroller and the first thing I've done is I've kind of moved all of my other components away from it. Uh, like all these kind of resistors and capacitors over here, all these various connectors and stuff like that. They're all kind of cleared out of the way so that I've got a bit of room to breathe. The next thing I did is I went around and placed my decoupling capacitors right by the ground and power pins where they should be around my microcontroller. I'm operating on a quarter millimeter grid. Um, I find this is a good size for just kind of initial placement because it lets me line things up when I need to and keep things parallel. Um, and it gives me kind of enough flexibility to move things close together. The next thing I usually do is kind of come up with a layout for how my crystal and my lobe caps are gonna be oriented. I've already done this, so I'm just gonna kind of redo my changes and then I'll explain what I did. Moving things closer, I've rotated the crystal because the oscillator in and out pads are kind of on a diagonal. So by rotating the crystal, probably get a straight trace out of the middle of the pad into the pad on the load capacitor without having to necessarily do a differential pair, although I'll probably do that. Uh, rotating your crystal this way uh, is a good way to, to automatically adjust the length of the the path that your uh, trace needs to go. And I also think it kind of looks cool. I'm gonna keep going uh, with my changes here. So I've moved the number around, getting this capacitor into place. And what I've got now is a reasonably straight run from my pad through my load cap over to the pin on the microcontroller. Then I kind of snug it up against the microcontroller to just reduce the length that that run has to go. And uh, there we go. This is kind of a, a decent initial layout, but I'm not actually going to wire this up yet. Um, what I like to do is kind of get the fiddly components done and placed roughly in kind of a cluster around usually a chip where they're relevant. Then with those kind of big clusters of components, I like to kind of move those around on my circuit board area, um, which in this case I haven't actually defined yet because uh, I don't really have any strict requirements on size. And then I'll kind of drag larger blocks of components around and rotate them so that the connections between my larger chips can be kind of nice and straight and uh, I can kind of minimize crossovers. And So I've got kind of all the necessary components for the microcontroller pretty much laid out roughly where they're gonna end up. And things are kind of tidied up a little bit. Um, so this is kind of a nice block that I can move around here if I need to. So I'd kind of highlight all these and then I can move this whole microcontroller and uh, support component section around. I'll zoom out. I'm gonna get some of these kind of other minor components out of the way um, and I'll move these guys out of the way as well. Another very important section of the board that I'm working on is this RF section. And I've done a similar thing to the microcontroller here. Kind of number one, placed all the decoupling capacitors I actually have a reference layout for this uh, that I'm following because that's obviously if you have reference material, it's uh, typically a good idea to follow it. And this itself is sort of another big kind of block uh, like that uh, microcontroller area was. It turns out that the connection between this radio transceiver and this microcontroller is another kind of pretty important uh connection. I like to kind of just move things and see what happens here. So I've got the things bouncing around or just grounds connecting to each other. But let's experiment and see if, if I rotate this block, if I can get a nicer layout. So that's looking not too bad. I've got kind of the four main signals are now pretty much parallel. I've got kind of a crossover section here maybe. And I've got, uh, let's see, a crossover here. I could do something like, I could have my signals kind of come out from here and then do a right angle and then go in. That 
that may work. Although let's investigate around here. Looks like we've got something that'll cross over. That kind of makes sense that the, the same signal would cross over even though it's at a 90 degree angle. So I might not really be able to avoid that. If I rotate the whole thing this way, we've got like a whole pile of signals crossing over, over on the right side of screen. So that's not really a good option either. This orientation is probably about as good as I'm going to get. And it's also kind of nice that, yeah, I can really kind of minimize that distance. So that's good. And the other thing I can do is line up my two crystals, which are both at a weird angle, but they can both be parallel if I were to just kind of move these around a little bit. And you'll find that oftentimes a layout that's kind of aesthetically nice often will be decently good for signal integrity and actually minimizing the length of your traces uh, in a lot of cases. That's not bad. So yeah, to actually do this routing, that's a straight shot. That's got to move around, but yeah, not, not really too bad. So now essentially what I've got here is the two more tricky or, or kind of mission critical areas of my board uh, figured out and placed. And of course, like I, I may need to kind of move, let's say I need to kind of move this around to allow more space. So I, I can kind of sneak those two pretty close together. And then I've, I'll have like a nice compact board, which is good. So that worked out pretty well. So we've got a spy port here. So I'm gonna have, my plan here is to have a connector on either side. So one along here and then one along here, but it looks like I'll have a decent amount of room for that. Bring in my schematic here. Uh, let's deal with this reset button. So let's figure out how to do that nicely as well. Um, so switch one, I'll search for that. And then R3 and C11 are the components I need to track down. Let's go search for that. There's my switch. So I'll just grab that. I like to kind of collect my components first. So then we've got R3, which is this guy right here, and C11 as well. So I'm trying to find the reset pin on my microcontroller so I can figure out where might be good to actually connect this up. It's this pin here right by the clock signals. So I may have a couple of options here and it may end up being a good idea to change or kind of do a bit more layout first. But I, I see one option I could do is I could actually place a switch between my two crystals here. Since that's a pretty straight shot, I may kind of sneak the trace around in the corner just to give myself room. But I could also maybe have the switch over on this side because I'm going to end up having components here anyway, so I'm not really eating up any room. I think what I'll do for now is place the switch between my two crystals. Let's see what I can do with uh, my passives here. So C11. From pin three on my schematic, just down to ground here. That can probably go there, and then I'll just move this label, sneak that a bit closer. And R3, I think it was, was just a pull up. Can really go anywhere. And then maybe I'll adjust the placement of that. Or actually, what I'll probably do is place it below. My crystal's pretty much lined up. I've got my tricky components dealt with. And I've got a decent layout and I've got like unlimited space over here right now to place the rest of my parts. And I'll end up having a probably somewhat long but short in height, this dimension, board. I'm not actually gonna wire anything yet. I'll probably deal with this section and then I've still got a couple of uh, pins I wanna break out onto connectors, but I don't know which connector pin necessarily lines up nicely with which microcontroller pin yet until I kind of hash out the layout a little bit more. But this is a good starting point and this is where I want to be at this stage in the game. It's definitely a good idea to come up with a pretty nice uh, kind of initial placement before you start trying to wire too many things because you'll find it's it's a lot easier to move components around before they've been wired and it's really nice to be able to move around kind of big groups of components that definitely need to stay together like I've done here for the microcontroller and the RF section. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you picked up a tip or two. 